welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for August 4th, 2017. This is episode 28 called Win Championships with Microsoft Teams, Azure Logic Apps, and Microsoft Flow. So no community content today since this show will be pretty long to begin with. So we'll jump right into it. So teamwork. Nowadays everything's about teams. Very hard to do anything on your own. Here's a picture of the 2013 Arizona State Sun Devils after they won the Territorial Cup. And here we're going to show how you can use Microsoft Teams and some of the other supporting Azure and Microsoft services such as Azure Logic Apps and Flows to really make your teams more valuable and actually enrich your Microsoft Teams experience by getting data in and out of that tool using some of these additional services. Now Microsoft Teams is often positioned as an email killer and while it does reduce the amount of email it is so much more than that. Now this is a typical screenshot of what Microsoft Teams is for those who may not familiar for those that may not be familiar with the tool it is a Slack competitor but it's becoming much much more than that especially when you start to plug in the rest of the Office 365 ecosystem. So within Teams, what you do is you do identify teams. So in this case, we've got Northwest Traders. And then within that team, you have the ability to create specific channels. For example, general, customer accounts, development, marketing, social media, etc. This allows you to have different topics and remain on topic as part of that. The idea is that you can still communicate and collaborate amongst your team members without inundating their mailbox with email. Now in the event that you do want to get someone's attention, you can at them much like you can with Twitter and other social media tools. But there are other opportunities to get more value and that's through integration. So naturally with Middle or Friday, we're going to explore these different areas. Now here's some of the integration options and we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into each one of these. So one, you've got built-in connectors, including webhooks. You also have the ability to plug in the bot framework, the Microsoft bot framework that is. And certainly you also have the ability to use Azure Logic Apps and Microsoft Flow in order to get data in and out of your Microsoft Teams deployment. So let's take a quick look at the built-in connectors. So what you can do to add a connector is select your thread. In this case I'm choosing general. And then I can just click on the ellipsis and then we're going to see a few options here including connectors. From connectors there's a whack of connectors as you'd come to expect from Microsoft these days. Now you can select and configure many of these different connectors. I've gone ahead and chosen Twitter, um, but there's also other ones like such as Yammer or even Visual Studio Team Services. Now the idea with Twitter is I can go ahead and log in with a specific account. In this case I just chose my own Twitter account. Then I can choose what other Twitter accounts I want to include separated by commas. I can also add hashtags as well. So if I wanted to follow some of the different BizTalk and Logic Apps folks and perhaps some of the hashtags like MSBTS or Power Apps or Microsoft Flow. I can go ahead and do that and I can also choose how frequently I want this information to be populated within my team. So this is a pretty efficient and low friction way to get data into your Microsoft Teams channel. We also have the ability to provide webhooks. So what a webhook is going to do in this case is expose a URL that can be called from external systems in order to publish data into that specific channel. So what you do is you go ahead and provide a name for your webhook. You can customize the image and upload your own image if you wish. You go ahead you click create and from there you will have a URL that gets exposed that you can plug into. Now I've included a link, it'll be in the comments as well, that talks about the, the schema required to, 
push a message into this webhook. So you can actually get pretty fancy with some of these webhooks. There's a lot of different markup that you can be provided. You can provide like surveys, buttons, rich text, you know, a lot of different colors and formatting. So it does get fairly sophisticated and as a result there's some documentation that will walk you through that. Now let's move on to bots and logic apps. Now I talked about this at my at Integrate 2017 in London. It was my talk. So that talk isn't out yet. They haven't started releasing those videos. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail because I don't want to take away from what BizTalk360 is going to be doing. But I do want to show you exactly how you can use the bot framework at a high level and plug it into Microsoft Teams in order to bring interaction to your Microsoft Teams chat or channel. So the first thing you can do with the Microsoft Bot Framework is you download the SDK. Then what you're going to have is you're going to have a new template for Visual Studio. Under C Sharp, you select Bot Application. From there you go out, go ahead and build out your, your bot itself. And if you're not familiar with this process, it's very similar to a web API or an MVC application where you have different models and controllers. You also have the ability to create different prompts that will act as a way to prompt your user for different inputs. So, if, you know, how many widgets would you like to buy? What is the price you'd be willing to pay? Uh, what is your address that I can ship these widgets to? Those are all examples of prompts that you would want to include within your bot. Once you've gone ahead and tested that locally, you would want to go ahead and publish that to Azure App Service. Once it is in Azure App Service, you want to register your bot with the Microsoft Bot Framework. So that's at dev.botframework.com. You go ahead, you give your bot a name, you give it a handle, a description, and you go ahead and you click create. Now there isn't a distinction, important distinction here is that if you you don't have to publish your bot into the bot directory. So if you have an enterprise bot, you don't actually have to go ahead and go through that process, but you will have to sideload your bot into Microsoft Teams. Now, once you've gone ahead and registered your bot, these are all of the different channels, the chat channels that you can use with your bot. So here we've got Skype already running, so Skype, and that would be the consumer version of Skype. We also have the web chat, which is really a test tool as part of the, the bot framework. And then what you can go ahead and do is select Microsoft Teams. Basically then have to hit done and your bot is going to be available within Microsoft Teams. The exception is, as I mentioned before, you do need to sideload this app. So here's a link where you're going to need your Microsoft Office 365 tenant admin to go ahead and enable a setting here for you but there's more details at this specific link. So the scenario I'm going to run through for you then this once again is the demo that I showed at Integrate. It is my crypto bot service so crypto is one of my hobbies and pastimes these lately and what we're going to go ahead and do is have a different trader or investor scenario where from within Microsoft Teams I'm able to go ahead and call upon different operations related to trading cryptocurrency. Now as part of the solution my bot service is going to actually talk to Azure API Management which is going to protect different Azure Logic Apps. So basically I'm exposing Azure Logic Apps as HTTP endpoints then I can go ahead and protect them as part of the API management solution. Now the top right here there's an exchange called Quadriga and I'm using this exchange to go ahead and provide the real-time prices for Bitcoin and Ethereum for my bot. Now I could input an API key that would allow me to buy and sell these different cryptocurrencies through this exchange but for the purpose of this demo I'm going to emulate that process using Azure SQL. Now also here at the bottom center is I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of Lewis, which is Language Understanding Intelligence Service. This is an artificial intelligence service that's going to detect my intent based upon different utterances 
or statements that I make. It then has the ability to map my any entities related to those intents. Now, once again, I'm going to not go into a ton of details here because I do want to save that for the video that BizTalk360 will provide. But let's jump into a quick demo and I'll at least give you some insight in terms of how Microsoft Teams can go ahead and talk to the bot framework and in turn I have access to a whack of Azure services and especially using Azure Logic Apps I now have this connectivity layer where I can talk to other systems whether it be exchanges or Azure SQL in this instance. So here we go, we're inside of Microsoft Teams. In this case, I'm going to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation just through chat as opposed to the actual channel in Teams, but you certainly can enable a bot for a channel. We're going to just have this one-on-one -on -one chat. And within Teams, I can go ahead and ask my crypto bot different questions. For example, I can say, what is the price of Ethereum? So for those of you that may not be familiar, Ethereum is a cryptocurrency. It currently has the second largest market cap behind Bitcoin. And at this moment, the last price of Ethereum in Canadian dollars is $270.01 per coin. Now I can also say, how much does ETH cost? ETH being the symbol for Ethereum. So notice I've asked that question two different ways, but my bot largely through Lewis has detected the same intent. So now we can see that it has jumped up a dollar 98 cents in really the last 10 seconds. So uh, that's pretty cool. This must be on a bull run right now, but anyways, I can also just type in price in Bitcoin because this bot also understands Bitcoin as well. And let's see, the last price of Bitcoin is 37.10. So now let's go ahead and check what my position in Ethereum is. So how many Ethereum do I have? So it'll go ahead and it'll detect that I've got 189 fictitiously uh, Ethereum coins. So let's go ahead and uh, you know the price seems pretty good so why don't we go ahead and uh, well let's see what the price is again. Maybe we can do a quick flip. Okay so it didn't like that statement. So here's an opportunity where I need to go back and train my model because it didn't quite understand that statement. So the price is still $271.99. So let's go ahead and let's, let's buy one theorem or ETH at $271.99. So it just detected I bought that Ethereum and then I can go ahead and check my position and I'll go what is my position in Ethereum. So before it said I had 189 Ethereum, now it's saying I have 190. So that's working. So let's go ahead and uh, check on Bitcoin once again. Price is 3700 That's actually gone up a fair bit. Why don't we go ahead and sell uh, one of my Bitcoins, my fictitious Bitcoins. So it says I have 291, I wish. That would be awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and sell one. So let's dump one BTC at See, 3700 bucks Canadian. Okay, so it's just said that I've sold one Bitcoin. Let's go ahead and say, uh, what is my position in 
Bitcoin. Should be 290, so perfect. So that's a very quick example of how we can use Microsoft Teams, the bot framework, and Logic Apps in order to bring in more data, more capabilities into our Microsoft Teams environment. Now when the videos do come out for Integrate, I encourage you to check them out. I've also built bots that talk to ServiceNow where I can go ahead and create ServiceNow tickets and close them. I also have a field worker scenario where we can go ahead out to different power plants and retrieve master data from SAP as if we were going to go ahead and repair some equipment. So really it's that Logic Apps and all of the connectivity that Logic Apps brings that really unlocks a lot of different scenarios and gives you the ability to have conversations with different applications and provide or perform different functions without actually leaving your user interface, which is pretty cool. So I hope you enjoyed that demo. As I mentioned, uh, look for more details once the Integrate 2017 videos come out. So moving ahead, let's now talk about Flow and the ability to automate different tasks using Flow and publish the results of those tasks into Microsoft Teams. Now really this scenario is enabled through the Microsoft Teams connector. And certainly this connector is not unique to Microsoft Flow. It's also available to Azure Logic Apps. The same set of operations do exist. I think the question becomes who is the person that needs to build this automation and does that make more sense to do in Flow or does it make more sense to do inside of Azure Logic Apps? Now in this case we're going to go ahead and use Microsoft Flow. Now the, the use case itself is, is based on weather and getting weather information into Microsoft Flow on a regular interval. Now there's several different businesses or use cases where you want to know whether and have that published. Um, so you don't have to chase it all of the time. Like how many intranets have weather, a weather widget embedded within their you know, homepage? Same idea except once again, why would I go open a web browser if I'm working in Microsoft Teams all day long collaborating with my, my different team members? So you might have some sort of a, a business where you've got field workers and you want to be aware of the different elements that exist. Uh, specifically, say for example in Canada where we can have harsh winters and some pretty brutal uh, springs when it comes to some of the rain, uh, you probably want to know sort of what the forecast is in order to prepare yourself for the different uh, elements. You might also have, say, a trading business where you're trading commodities and as the weather changes in different locales, the price of that commodity could spike or it could plummet as a result. Think of a very hot summer um, in different regions, say Ontario or Texas. You'll have these massive variances of weather and as a result the demand for different commodities such as power or perhaps even coal if you have coal fired power generation. So let's now dive into Microsoft Flow itself and take a look at how we would actually go ahead and build this use case. So I'm now in Flow, and I can go ahead and click on My Flows, and in this case I've created a Team Flow. And this is a pretty simple flow. It's going to go ahead and, on a, a trigger, recurrence, go ahead and call the Weather API provided by Microsoft, and then publish those results into Microsoft Teams. So let's dive down deeper into this. In this case, every 60 minutes, uh, we're going to go ahead and kick off this flow. Now there's three calls that are occurring here. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, the current weather for Calgary. I will then go ahead and get the weather forecast for Calgary for today. And then I'm also going to go ahead and get the weather for Calgary for tomorrow. Once I have all of this data, I'm going to create a bit of a, a composite message that's going to 
encapsulate all of these different values. And I'm going to then provide like the current temperature, the high for today, the low for today, any conditions, is it sunny, is it partly sunny, is it cloudy. I can also provide click through details and actually provide the user with a link back to MSN where they can see the forecast for the entire week. And then I'll go ahead and do something similar for tomorrow. Now I'm interested in a few other cities as well. So I'm going to go after Houston and go up to the same data set and then also Los Angeles. So I'm going to run through these different scenarios and publish the data to Teams as soon as it becomes available. So I'm going to jump back into Teams. And I'm going to go into the channel where this information is being published to. And as you can see at 9.01 p.m., so 10 minutes ago, this flow ran. It's given me the current temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. The high today was 25, the low was 13 overnight. It's mostly cloudy and I do have details. I can go ahead and click on the details. And we'll see, Ooh, looks like there's some thunder storms headed, headed my way. Now Flow, similar to Logic Apps, provides you the ability to see your run history. So I can dive into the run history and check out the execution, get a sense of the different metadata or data that's being returned from the different services, and see how long each execution took as well. So the question is, could you do this in Logic Apps? And the answer is absolutely. You could go ahead and use the same connector inside of Logic Apps and feed the same types of data to Microsoft Teams. But I would argue in this case, you know, this is something that a citizen integrator can do. It wouldn't require the expertise of a hardcore integration person. And I would also say if you've got a flow, or sorry, if you have a team, you essentially have a channel, and that's really a self-service tool that different business users can actually use in order to collaborate. You don't really need someone from IT getting in the middle of that and actually building you know, a logic app that has to be managed um, and you know, connect into that specific channel uh, when you wouldn't have to say create tickets for the service desk to add members to that, why would you go ahead and add this overhead? The other thing I would add is that with Microsoft Flow in this scenario, if you've got a user that's already has a Microsoft Office 365 license, they're going to have some flow entitlements, assuming they have the right SKU. So why would you go ahead and pay additional money to have that run in Logic Apps when a user can go ahead and run that under their entitlement when really they own that team itself. So that's, so that's it for this week's episode. I hope you learned a few things. Once again, want to thank BizTalk360 for their continued support of the show. They're a great partner. Also, check out their website for more information related to Integrate 2017 USA, which will take place in Redmond at the end of October. So once again, we are in summer hours, so I will see you in two weeks, but thanks for tuning in.